Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today I'll be talking about the expectancy theory. This is a theory of motivation, and it was created by Victor Vroom. The expectancy theory was created to address work performance and school performance, and not to address mental health treatment. Although I think there is some overlap between this theory and mental health treatment, certainly in the area of helping people with career counseling, or some sort of specific performance-related goal. So the theory comes down to an equation. Motivation equals, and then there's these three components. And motivation is the product of these three components. So it goes like this. Motivation equals valence times expectancy times instrumentality. So motivation is the product of valence, expectancy, and instrumentality. So I'll go through each one of these. The first one is valence. Now I'm going to use an example of school performance here. So say that a student is in a particular course and they want to get a perfect score. They're looking at attempting to get a perfect score in the course. Not just an A, but a 100%. So they're examining their motivation to determine if it's worth it, if it makes sense, if it can happen. All these different factors, they're weighing the pros and the cons. They're looking at what they believe, they're looking at what other people have experienced, they're taking in all this input and it's affecting their motivation. And we can see here the expectancy theory lines up pretty well with this. So with this example, let's first look at the valence. Valence means value. So in this instance, the student's looking at potentially trying to get this perfect score. And the question would be, how important is the perfect score to that student? That's the valence. The higher the valence, the higher the motivation. Next we have expectancy. Now expectancy is the belief that an increased amount of effort, for example, studying more, will result in increased performance. So a student in this situation would look at expectancy. In order for that expectancy to be high, they'd have to believe that studying more, working more effectively in groups, on group assignments, and other school-related activities would increase their performance, would increase their ability to get higher scores, in this case a perfect score, in this course. The last component is instrumentality. And instrumentality has to do with the belief that the outcome is actually achievable. And if the performance increases, that the student will receive the outcome, using this example of, the, of a perfect score. So the student would have to believe the perfect score is actually possible. Some factors that could influence instrumentality using this example would be if the student's schedule didn't allow them to achieve every assignment perfectly. They couldn't get to class and participate in every assignment so they can't get a perfect score. If they believed for some reason the teacher would not give out a perfect score, say that the, the teacher has a history of being very reluctant to give out perfect scores, that would lower instrumentality. So when looking at motivation, you have the valence, right? so the importance needs to be high, the expectancy, so increased effort, needs to result in increased performance, and instrumentality, that increased performance, needs to be able to produce the outcome that the person wants. Those three elements together equal, in theory, that individual's level of motivation. Now, as I mentioned before, this theory, the expectancy theory, was developed to be used with work performance, school performance. When we think of it in terms of mental health treatment, we can see there is some clear overlap. As I mentioned, clients do come to mental health counseling, oftentimes with performance-related goals. They want to increase performance and achieve some sort of objective, complete some sort of task. And we can see how valence and expectancy and instrumentality could be used to determine a level of motivation. 
When we use the word motivation in mental health treatment, sometimes we're referring to the motivation to stop using substances. And we can see here there's some overlap, but there's also some additional factors in substance use, like the effect of substances on the brain and relationships and social situations that affect motivation. Still, there's some overlap, and I do find this theory to be interesting and useful in clinical practice, particularly with career counseling, but also sometimes with mental health counseling. I hope you found this description of expectancy theory to be interesting. Thanks for watching.